as we welcome you from Atlanta. The Sweet 16 has arrived at the Cinderella South region, beginning with the 11 seed Loyola University Chicago out of the Missouri Valley Conference against the 7 seed, the University of Nevada, the Wolfpack. That's right, this is Sister Jean, this is little Mariah. These are the dream chasers here in the Sweet 16. Hi everybody, Brian Anderson along with Chris Weber. Lisa Byington is our reporter. So great to have you with us. And Chris, talk about dream chasing. We have to start with Loyola Chicago. Not one, but two game-winning shots at the end of games. The Missouri Valley champ says, listen, don't wake us up. Dante Ingram led by him. Look at this. This is off of a play. Catch and shoot. Knock it down. Clayton Custer, though. How about this guy? 3.6 seconds remaining. You see what he you see what he does with the love of the rim. But how about him in the second half? Six for nine shooting, four for six threes in the tournament. He shines brightest when the game gets late in the game. You wait your whole life to have an opportunity like that. They get two in two days. Now, Nevada had their own dramatic two big comebacks, including down 22 against Cincinnati. This is a pro style system. Eric Musselman, the Mountain West Coach of the Year, but watch out for the Martin brothers. Caleb and Cody, these guys average 33, 11, and 7.5 and to combine. Well, let's get it going here. They are ready to tip. Nevada never thought, never dreamed they'd be in their home whites representing the better seed, but here they are. Nevada against Loyola Chicago, a battle of wolves. Here in our first game, we'll have Kentucky and K-State in game number two. The tip is underway, and that is going to belong to Nevada. And that's how we open up our Sweet 16 matchup. The twins, Caleb and Cody Martin. Cody wearing number 11, Caleb wearing number 10. Cody will run the point. They have been a big story. They play just six players. On occasion, they'll bring in a seventh man, but it's typically a six-man rotation. Down 14 against Texas. Came back and won in round one. And as Chris mentioned, down 22 against the two-seat Cincinnati. Springing free and scoring the first basket of the game is Alice Cook. If you're watching Nevada for the first time, they love a pro-style offense. They've won about 200 passes her game, even though they only have six players, I'm impressed with their energy, their attention to detail, and focus. Custer, who hit the big shot to send them to the Sweet 16, who typically handles the ball. Quentin, the freshman, banging inside, and he's on the board. That's what he can do inside. The beautiful left hand. He has great footwork, plays defense by position. Gets great position though inside that time offensively. Lots of award winners with these two teams coming out of the mid-major ranks. Loyola Chicago in the Missouri Valley on the take. Straight to the hole is Cody Martin. Who can impose their will? You can't really say Loyola Chicago runs the slowdown game. And while they minimize possession statistically, you see a lot of passing. They play a beautiful brand of basketball as Richardson has it swiped. Good defense there by Kendall Stevens. Here you see the big seal inside. Crutwig is just using his position, but you're going to have to watch out for the Martin brothers all night. Look at Crutwig. How about two for two to get it started by the big man? Cameron Crudwick, just a freshman from the Chicago suburb of Algonquin. Got a lot of Illinois ties here with Loyola Chicago as they have rebuilt that program in the Missouri Valley under Porter Moser, now in his seventh year. The Wolfpack in Nevada, they want to score, they want to run, averaging 83 points per game. Working inside strong is Jordan Caroline. Jordan, that's how you make your presence felt. When it's a mismatch on the other end, use your advantage on your offensive end. He did at that time, using his quickness to get back from it. Custer kicks it. On the take goes Towns. Too hot. Here comes Nevada. This is where they are at their best. Coming off a miss in transition. Stevens misses the three. Well, that almost went in. <laughs> Custer secures the rebound. Good action early in this one. Towns kicks it. Ingram misses his first three. Again, Nevada, only six players they have on the floor. Watch them get back on defense. They don't take shortcuts. Six players on offense, scoring, running like they do, and man-to-man -man defense for Nevada. It is a fascinating watch to see not just their, their stamina, which is exemplary, 
but also how they function. If they get in foul trouble, where do they go? Cuthering coming up short that time, his first miss. That's part of what's going to hurt Nevada with only six players. They're going to switch everything. That's what they have to do to kind of conserve energy on one end. That means Crutwig better go to work inside using his advantage in size. Nevada winning their conference championship in the regular season. Went 29 and 7 now. Their updated record went 15 and 3 in Mountain West play. Oh, oh my goodness, and a block on Crutwig as Jordan Caroline was rising up to the rafters. I think Crudwick might have been in the restricted area. He's going to the free throw line for a pair. Well, Caroline has the body of a linebacker, and he just tried to attack the basket. Crudwick tries to get outside. He may have been moving a little bit. Looks like his foot right there. His right foot is on the hill. But again, if you're Caroline, that's what you have to do. Crudwick's going to get you on one end. First free throws. As Caroline hits the first. A reminder, you can watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. Jordan Caroline, 17.7 per game on average. He's up over 20 in his last five games going through the Mountain West Tournament and then into the NCAA Tournament. Cutwick will sit. As Loyola Chicago goes with their small lineup that includes Andre Jackson. Let's see if you get penetration by Towns now that likes to penetrate for himself, but it will get others involved. Ingram finds Jackson, gets the ball in his hands right away. He's blocked right away. First run of the game for Josh Hall as well, 33 and white. Hit the game winning shot, round two, and he gets his hands on the ball as well. That's he a scores. Pro. That's a pro offense when you cut, even if you see a driver, don't you give up on the play. You may have to be an outlet just in case the guy penetrating may get a shot block. Be there for the release. That's a 6 0 burst for the Wolfpack of Nevada. They lead a 10 4. Just trying to catch our breath here to start this game. Furious action. Three point misses. Ben Richardson, they count on him for a three-point shooting and defense. Cody Martin looking for his twin brother, he's got him! Slicing and dicing, and Nevada jumping out to an 8-0 run and a 12-4 lead in the Sweet 16. Well, handling this Nevada team here out of the gates has been a challenge here for Loyola, as is handling this stage. This program is not used to this since the mid-80s. Now, Loyola, the hype is very real. When this team returned on Sunday after the first weekend, they noticed that the, the media hype was there. The campus bookstore sales are up 300% from this time last year. People buying Rambler gear coast to coast, internationally, from Italy and Japan. Brian, you've got former president in Chicago and Barack Obama Obama tweeting about it. Chicago native Chance the Rapper tweeting about it. Some of the biggest faces for the Chicago Cubs sending congratulatory videos. This hype is very real in the Windy City. No question, Lisa. It's a great point. Two big numbers for Loyola to think about. 33 years and 55 years. So 33 years since their last Sweet 16. That was in 85. 55 years ago, their national championship in 1963. Strong coming out of the timeout as Andre Jackson comes off the bench for Loyola Chicago, gets him a big bucket and ends an 8-0 run for Nevada. Nevada is not a team that has enjoyed the lead very often in this tournament so far. Wow, knocks it down inside, outside, Jordan Caroline. Couple to play here tonight. How about you leave it for the big fella to score the team's first points outside of the paint? And that's what the big fella has done all night. Undersized, maybe against the big fellas, but now he has his sweet spot and definitely has the off the offensive offensive advantage. Jordan Caroline, a star out of the community college ranks, McLennan Community College down in Texas. On the take goes Custer. Clayton Custer, who hit that big shot, got the friendly bounce, maybe. Manipulated a little bit by Sister Jean in a prayer to come up with that incredible victory in Dallas over Tennessee, the three seed. Here's Caroline again, and he gets it to the glass. He's fouled. 
Free throws coming. Foul belongs to Richardson. Caroline will shoot. Timeout on the floor. Chris, let's talk a little bit about the pack and how they're moving the basketball. Well, let's start with Cody Martin. Two points, but two assists. He gets one right there to his brother Caleb. And how about the big fella? Seven points. I love the way he's been inside, but just more so dominating. And you're really going to need him tonight defensively and offensively. But right now, this pro-style offense, these guys are sharing the ball. You see what they do all year and in the tournament, 15 assists. And it's all because when the defender turns his head, look for the offensive player to make a quick, hard, decisive cut. Second time to the free throw line for Jordan Caroline. Nevada's made five two-point field goals, all those coming in the paint. Caroline hit the three. And he makes them both, Jordan Caroline. They were playing Sweet Caroline, the Loyola Chicago band, during that last timeout. I think it inspired him a little bit. <laughs> He's been a Sweet Caroline to start this game in the Sweet 16. He is going to be a handful for Loyola Chicago. Tied up, that'll be a held ball. And possession arrow will stay in the possession of Loyola Chicago. Nevada, by no stretch of the imagination, is a, is a large team. They're one of the smallest teams I've seen. But one thing that's unique about them is that they are all like-sized. And that is great for everyone except for Carolina has to battle the bigs inside. But everyone on this floor, all five guys, can switch. And that should help the defense right there, though. Custer with his jump shot, you have to honor that. His pump fake, you're going to go for it. He gets to the line. Custer free throws coming Bruno Skokna Lucas Williamson first time on the floor for the Ramblers and the foul on Cody Martin that time so Custer to the line playing these games and at this university with his best buddy Ben Richardson coverage of the NCAA Division one women's basketball championship regional semifinals begins tomorrow 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN ESPN 2 and the ESPN app for more information on game times and listings go to NCAA.com missed them both did Custer his buddy Richardson on the bench for the first time getting his first breather with Williamson on the floor Guarding Cody Martin right now Custer has the other Martin twin who knocks down a big three. Caleb, a 40% three-point shooter, hit the game-tying three-pointer against Cincinnati late in their round of 32 matchup Sunday. His first try is a good one. Williamson on the take, has a block. West defense right there by the guard, holding his position, getting that block blade. Josh Hall crossover, hot pass for Caroline, and the ball moves well. Counting passes, oh, turnover, fell to the ground. Caleb Martin is playing with an injured foot, mind you. He's been playing with that injured foot, Liz Frank sprain. And his stability is not where he would want it, but he is the player of the year in the Mountain West Conference, their top scorer. But it is a significant injury, and Chris, it hasn't been a boot every other time except when he's on the floor in practice or during games. Yeah, you're going to see him lose his kind of footing right there, but he's just a gamer. He wants to play and he wants to be there for his team. And it doesn't seem like to affect him when the lights and the popcorn start popping. It seems like, seems like everything's healed and he's okay. It is that left foot, something to keep an eye on. Ingram hit the game winner in round one. Skokna dumps it inside. Kirkwick back on the floor. Had a great start. Made his first two. He's got a lot in the tool shed down there. A little too much for Foster that time. Foster trying to hold his position. The pump fake and the beautiful left again. How many guys talk to us about Crudwig? And the name that comes up is George Mikan. He's got the George Mikan game in the paint. A flurry of big man skills and moves down there. I'm going to give Crudwig more care, more, more more props than that. They say George Mikan because he originated the George Mikan layup, left hand, right hand on both sides. This guy Krupwick has game, even a little bit of that Kevin McHale in him when he gives you some of that freaky move with his shoulder. Towels on the take is bumped on his way. Back to Crudwick. And this is what I mean. Mikan didn't have this in his game. It was no pump fakes back then. It was just left right hand layup. Crudwick gives you that shoulder, a little bit of the body, and leans to the other side. This is this is that new type game he has. Nice watching him inside get work. Freshman of the year in the Valley this year as Marcus Towns goes to the free throw line. Knocks down the first. 
Well, who's going to make the most shots, we ask? Who has more points in the second half? If your bracket's already busted, play the Capital One NCAA Tournament Run Game on NCAA.com and in the March Madness Live app. Towns knocks down his first two free throws. And Loyola Chicago down eight. Nevada with the ball had an 8 0 run early in this game. There's Caleb Martin misses on his three offensive rebound. Second chance here for Nevada. Into the corner it goes. Stevens misses again. He's 0 for 3. And that'll be Loyola Chicago ball. Foul on Nevada. And I believe they got Caleb Martin. 20 to 10. Downtown Atlanta. Sunset at the Sweet 16. NCAA tournament, of course, the 63 championship team. And this particular team, the 18 Loyola Chicago Ramblers, shines a very bright spotlight on a very important team, which we'll get into a little later in our broadcast, the national championship team of 63. Looking for Crutwig again. He's been their best offense. Let's check in with Lisa on the star shooter for Nevada, Caleb Martin. What do you have, Lisa? Yeah, Brian, you were mentioning his left foot injury. A lot of that last timeout, he takes his shoe off. You can see it there. In fact, he does it after every timeout. He says, it helps me air it out. The pain is pulsing. It's throbbing. I try to massage it, stretch it. I've tried a little bit of everything. Tape it, put pads on it, pain medication. And he admits, it definitely makes me second guess my jumping and explosiveness to the rim. Well, you can understand, Chris, as that's going to stay in the possession of Nevada, why that, a foot injury of that nature, trying to play at this high level and then the multiple games and trying to get it a practice time to, to keep your rhythm as well. It's so tough. How do you stay in shape? How do you keep your rhythm? All those things. But being the player, it comes down to just doing it. Can't care about that. Can't care about the reports now. He's living the dream this week 16. Coming off a 10-point game against... Cincinnati. Martin played 43 minutes in their overtime win against Texas. Great switching by Nevada. I mean, Loyola can't find a lane to penetrate because these guys are communicating and switching. Here's Towns trying to turn the corner. He does. Towns gets to the basket. He's been effective on the drive here early in this game. 6-0 run for the Ramblers of Loyola University, Chicago. That's what Towns can do, but what they did was they had kind of a three-man weave, and they used multiple dribble penetrations to try to break the defense. Hall working on Credwick, using his quickness and athleticism to score. Eric Musselman talking to us about their philosophy. They keep the, the soccer stat shots on goal. Trying to get 100 passes per half, 200 a game, as Chris mentioned earlier, and the shots on goal, trusting their rebounding, but they want to force as many as they can and try to put the pressure on the defense. They play smart. Now, what happened was Crutwick set the pick, and you thought that maybe Crutwick was going to duck in. Everybody waiting on him, but no. Towns with the nice layup sneaking in right behind the big fella's back. One thing about Nevada, their first two games, they led combined only four minutes and 24 seconds of the first two games of these, this NCAA tournament, those two big comebacks. They've maintained the lead for over eight minutes to start this one. The inside, not going to work there. Caleb Martin at 6-7. Stevens, long threes, missed four now. Tough start for him. Towns running the floor, and in transition, no. Back and forth they go. Caroline calling for it. And the pass is too hot. And a team that doesn't turn it over often. Their second turnover here tonight. How about this? Cody Martin, this should be a foul because players bail everyone out. He does not foul. Look at him. Move out of the way. You have to do that with only six players. Two points for the other team is, is more important or not as important as you getting that foul on you. Great job right there by Cody getting out of the way, getting his team that possession. Nevada's already matched their turnover total from their win against Cincinnati. How about that game? Two turnovers the entire game against that great defensive-minded Cincinnati team. Skogna trying for the reverse, gets the putback. Cameron Crutwig, four baskets already for Crutwig. He's four out of five. He's got eight points. That's what he's going to have to do, and more importantly, he's going to have to attack the boards tonight. It can't be a three-rebound game for Crutwig. He's going to have to have six-plus rebounds tonight to hold the paint down for his team inside. 
Lots of upperclassmen on the floor, both teams. He's the freshman. Custer. Skokner will take a long three. Skokner, now he can knock that down. Very fortunate if you're a Nevada fan that that one didn't go in. Skokna, 36% three point shooter. Hall will pull. And the rebound ripped down by Cameron Satterwhite. Gives it to Skokna. And another pick. Man. Too easy. Nevada is fronting inside. Anytime Nevada switches on Loyola, they front. They don't just bail out and let you pass it in there. Just they're communicating. They're flying all over the floor. Second turnover for Loyola Chicago Sunday on CBS when it comes to solving murders. He wrote the book Alan Cummings stars in the new drama Instinct Sunday after 60 minutes. Nevada started seven for nine from the field. Since that time, one for eight. Loyola Chicago can be a strong defensive team. Caleb Martin on the take, gives it up. Nice catch by Hall. And it's Crudwig who comes away with it. Richardson, a little crossover. Runs into a wall there, and a turnover. Number three, back-to-back -back possessions. The double team by Nevada. As soon as you turn your back, they're going to swarm. All the way in with a throwdown. Cody Martin gets to the rack, and the flush for the Wolfpack. Richardson. Looking for Custer, dump it inside to Crudwick. In and out they go. Long range three is up and good. Clayton Custer. Can't get frustrated if you're playing the right way like Loyola. Throw it into your big fella. Let him repost or you space the floor. He can play the point guard from that center position. Great job by Crudwick getting it right out so his guard can let it fly. First three pointer made. Caleb Martin trying to answer cannot. Caroline keeps it alive. And now Caroline. Trying to pull Crutwig out. Caroline will shoot it from behind the arc. He's got that in his game. Pro offense, but pro patience by this Nevada team. They really don't force it up unless they just want to take that shot. And it blocked. Sadaway with the block. In transition. Gives it up and blocked on the other end by Caroline. What recovery right there. This Nevada team gets back on defense. Only six players. Caleb kicks it to the corner. Three-pointer comes up short by Cook. Richardson, six and a half to go. First half of the Sweet 16 matchup. And a foul away from the ball. Caleb Martin and Cameron Crutwick coming together. Oh, man, there's twins. Caleb and Cody. This is Cody. They can score inside. Welcome back to Atlanta. Where Nevada enjoys a five point lead over Loyola. Now, check this play out right here. This is how you get back on defense. We're going to look at this. You see Caroline at the top now. Martin gets his shot blocked. Watch Caroline get back, get into the play, and right here, trust yourself. Get to that ball before it gets off the glass. And again, only six players deep. That's right. Some of your favorite teams have some of the best young recruits in the world, and they play zone all game. Well, let me tell you about a tough team named Nevada. They have six players, and they stick to man to man, and they switch every time. So impressed with the heart of this team, how they stick to their style of play. Yeah, definitely a reflection of their head coach, former NBA head coach Eric Musselman, and he's brought that pro style here. Took him and trained in Lake Tahoe, the high elevation, to prepare him for the rigors of the season, and there. Stamina is noteworthy. Nevada with the ball. Crutwick picked up his second foul going in to that last timeout. Here's Hollis Cook. And down in the corner, Caleb Martin. He's on the take. Looking for his twin brother. Can't find him. Richardson jumped the lane. Third turnover for Nevada. Custer for three. Sticks it in the neck. Don't mind that quick shot by Custer. Lowell is going to have to speed it up to find a good shot whenever they can. Sometimes you just can't wait. For the shot clock to come down to get that same bad shot. Nevada with the lead by five with the ball. 
made just two of their last 13 field goal tries. And a little oh. turnaround by Caleb is no good. Caroline battling, but Ingram comes away with it. Williamson down to the corner. Great box out by Jackson on that play. Ingram had it poked away. That's Caroline again. Cody Martin gives it up. Caroline running the floor. And it's gone the other way. It's a charge. Caroline picks up the foul. Loyola Chicago ball. I'm going to talk about getting back on defense. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, this Loyola team, you have to do it. Williamson with a great play there, but you got to do it with more of these type plays. Get extra possessions for your team and hopefully some wide open shots to let these three point shooters let it fly. These two teams traded two buckets to start. Then Nevada went on a 16 4 run. There was an 8 0 spell in the middle of that, taking their largest depth lead of this tournament. As Caleb Martin denies, gives us a chance to hear from Lisa. What do you have, Lisa? Well, yeah, Nevada now one of its last nine, but the hot start maybe for Eric Musselman is the fact that he decided to change up the game day routine. Nevada has played three postseason games, one in the conference tournament and two in the NCAA tournaments. They did not have a shoot around in any of those three games, and they started out slowly. They were trailing by 30 to San Diego State in that conference tournament, trailing by nine to Texas, 12 to Cincinnati at halftime. A much different start. He wanted to get his guys going a little bit. We saw it here at the beginning of this first half. Well, whatever he did has worked because they got off to that fantastic start. 16 4 run. Loyola answered with an 11 4 run. Caroline misfires. Four and a half to go. First half. Nevada has not gone home, by the way. There's a block. Are you kidding me? The Martin brothers are everywhere. Of course you know that's Cody. Cody comes and smacks that. Caleb has to block these guys from steals to fronting the post to switching to playing undersized all game. Neither one of them are power forward. They don't have the size, but they're doing it tonight because their team needs them. Just impressive defensive play by the, both of these guys. Both at 6-7, both transferring from NC State. Knoxville, North Carolina natives. And thriving here with Nevada and Musselman system. Custer gets to the glass. Custer with a layup. Well done. Do not, give man a, on the floor. Do not give a shot blocker space. That's what Custer just did. He took up that space. Therefore, Caroline couldn't get to the block. Nevada had a 12 point lead. It is now at three. Caleb Martin checking the clock. Being checked by Williamson. Put so much pressure on the defense. Part of that freedom of movement evaluation, easy call there. Custer able to take it to the hole, make it a three-point game. The Dream Chasers, Nevada, Loyola, Chicago. Side of a sweet 16. And our first game tonight, Nevada, coming out of the Mountain West. 29 wins this year against Loyola, Chicago, a 30-win team. They won 12 straight. And a couple of thrilling victories in the first two rounds in Dallas. In Nevada, you haven't scored in the last four minutes. You know you can score anytime you want. I'm looking for Caroline or someone to try to get inside and use their size. Offensive foul there on Caleb. That'll be his second. Williamson took the contact. Empty trip for Nevada. Watch the arm. You're yeah. going to see that little chicken wing go out, and he knows that his team needs a bucket almost four and a half minutes without his team scoring, and sometimes you can push the pace. With those two fouls. Caleb got into foul trouble in the second round game Sunday against Cincinnati. Nevada just one field goal in their last 10 tries, and another empty trip for him. Loyola, Chicago. At one point down 12, now within three. And looks like Cody Martin. Had a little bit of blood there, trying to clean it up on the sideline, and you're hoping he can get back in the game. Athletic trainer Ron Cooper gets him back on the floor. Now you get his brother out with those fouls, trying to just save time. Two fouls right there for Caleb. I save him to the second half. Foul trouble for Loyola Chicago as well. Cameron Crutwick on the bench with two. Might not see him the rest of this first half. Williamson pokes it away. That'll stay in the possession of Loyola Chicago. 16 on the shot clock. There's Crutwick who jumped out early. Eight quick points. 
He leads Loyola Chicago in scoring. And he stepped on the sideline. So Custer will turn it over. That's number six for Porter Moser's team already. Six giveaways. Yeah, he's going to step out the line right there. And let's see now. It's again, 445 without Nevada scoring a bucket. If they go inside to Carolina or try to get a little bit of penetration, that's how they've been scoring early. Off the foot of Cody Martin. Custer all the way. Defense turning into offense. One point game. Toughness of Loyola, you know that they are so focused standing games now. The body language matches their intensity, communicating and switching on D. Good ball movement down in the corner. Stevens, he cannot buy one right now. Williamson pulls down the board. Chance for Loyola Chicago to take the lead. Williamson's going all the way, lost the handle. That'll stay in the possession of the Ramblers. After turning it over over one end, Custer gets the ball this time and says, I'm going to make sure I finish this one. So much toughness and heart. Staying in the passing lanes, moving the defensive pressure up 94 feet up the floor. That's what you have to do if you're down and you want to win in this tournament. Custer has scored the last seven for Loyola. Transfer from Iowa State. Towns with the ball running a point in this set. Towns strong, but he blocked. Caroline picks up the foul. That's number two for Jordan Caroline. Loyola not suddenly. This is what Towns can do every game, especially if you've been seeing in these two games, these past two games in the tournament. But it seems after the first initial drive, Loyola has been content to kind of stop and shoot it. Now, passing it after initial, passing it after the second and the third, continuing to push the pace, continuing to try to get inside the paint. Pace favored Nevada early, but now Loyola Chicago starting to impose their will. All tied at 24. Don't forget, AT&T at the half coming up. First half analysis, an update on Texas A&M versus Michigan in Los Angeles. Plus the latest NCAA tournament news. It's AT&T at the half. Loyola Chicago with their first lead. Two free throws from Marcus Towns. Elijah Foster on the floor. Rarely plays for Nevada. But foul trouble with Caleb Martin and Jordan Caroline. Also uncontent to try to get to the halftime locker room. There's another turnover. Cody turns it over again. Custer right there. Towns pushing it. Kicks it. Ingram passed up a three. And now Towns on the take again. Can't get the roll. Elijah Foster with the board. Foster also has a mismatch up. Well, he does it now. He's had a mismatch the last two plays inside. Wanted to see if Nevada would go into the post up, but Loyola taking everything away in the passing and driving lanes. And a good answer by the Ramblers out of the Missouri Valley Conference. Minute 15 remaining in this first half. Long three. Martin Airball with a man in his face. Williamson right in on Cody. It's all about Loyola's D. They miss this layup, but they don't get discouraged. They get back, and now they are kind of looking like how Nevada did in the first few minutes of the game. They are switching. They are getting out into passing lanes, denying, cutting, and most importantly, communicating, having each other's back on a penetration. The scoring drive going to go over seven minutes for Nevada. They've missed a ton of threes now. Towns kicks it. Ingram. He gives it up. Now Williamson. Ball's moving well. Shot clock down to five. Can't get the open shot. Good defense by Nevada. Shot fake. And it's good. Towns again rattles one home. I may be off one or two, but I counted seven dribble drives right there. Seven. What does that mean? That means they are patient, but they are going to make sure they get the shot that they want. They trusted each other. Corner three. 20 to four run for Loyola Chicago after they were down 12. Nevada's missed their last eight three-point tries. Cody Martin. Williamson got him on his way to the basket. 7.42 without mm. a bucket for Nevada. Why is that so impressive? There's not one shot blocker out there for Loyola. 
They did this again position defense communication and guys policing themselves stepping up getting on each other to try to make this run. Eric Musselman's going back to his bench Crutwig remember with the two fouls but they played better with Crutwig out. We have foul trouble with Caroline and Caleb Martin. Charlie Tooley's in the game for the first time. Another guy that rarely plays did not play in the Cincinnati game. Alice Cook. 9 0 run without Crutwig on the floor for Loyola Chicago. Coming to the end here, and it's an air ball. Clock ticks. Ingram. And it will not count, even if it had gone. That takes us to the end of the first half. And what a run by Loyola Chicago. 20 to 4. 28 24. The Ramblers have the lead over the Wolfpack. 55. They were 0 for 8. As Chris mentioned, those five turnovers. So here we go. Second half, a trip to the Elite Eight and a matchup with the winner of Kentucky or K State, which will be the second game tonight here in Atlanta. And right out of the halftime locker room, straight to the basket, Cody Martin scores it for Nevada. During that run, that 20 to 4 run, it was Towns and Custer that did most of the damage. Here's Richardson. Runs over his opponent. That'll be a block, though, underneath. And that's a foul on Caleb Martin. That is number three for Martin, who sat the last few minutes of the first half in foul trouble. Let's check in with Lisa Byington. That was exactly what I had asked Eric Musselman. I said, what would you do if one of those two guys, Caleb Martin or Jordan Caroline, picked up his third? He's actually doing something that he told me he wasn't going to do. He said he was going to leave them in. So an interesting move here as Martin is subbed out. But foul trouble, a big concern for Eric Musselman. Caleb Martin and Jordan Caroline missed a combined seven minutes in the first half. But Eric Musselman thought that was enough to get them out of their offensive rhythm. All right, Lisa, thank you. And Towns, right? back at it Towns gets to the basket again during that run Chris Towns had nine of the 20 points he and Custer combined for 16 and he's got two more on the board give him 11 now wait till they can get Dante Ingram involved as you see right there the beautiful steal by Cook up top denied by Cody Martin Nevada it's all about pace can you get that pace can you get in your rhythm start getting the cuts Ball movement. There's Caroline. Got off to such a great start. Hook back free in the corner. Stevens. He needs to see one go through. He misses again. Stevens did not start the second half. Just came in for Caleb Martin. And the finish on the other end. Ben Richardson scores. And here comes Caleb Martin back to the scores table. Eric Musselman has seen enough. Was trying to hold serve without him. Caroline and a deflection by Custer but a foul want to get easy buckets fake going over the screen the defense has to help and the easiest bucket is always with the fast break and you see coach right there imploring his team to keep working keep it going especially on the defensive end to get easy buckets like that Ben Richardson part of the re recruiting of Clayton Custer Richardson coming out of high school in Overland Park, Kansas. Blue Valley Northwest. He and his high school teammate Clayton Custer. Custer had gone to Iowa State, convinced him to transfer and end up at Loyola. What a tandem they are. Richardson gets a rebound. He's pushing it, gives it up. And there he is again. Running the floor, Marcus Towns. Impact player tonight. He averages just 11 points a game. He's got 13. Another turnover. Towns again gives it up. Richardson returns the favor. Timeout, Nevada. Loyola Chicago on an 8-0 run and a 10-point lead. Talk about another team that can lock you down defensively, the Michigan Wolverines. What a great start against one of the two SEC teams remaining in this tournament. We'll have Kentucky next on this floor, Kentucky and K-State. Right now, Loyola Chicago in control. This matches their largest lead of the tournament. Have 
The same lead of 10 against Tennessee. Caroline trying to get Nevada back on the board. A foul as Hall puts one up. And Josh Hall, who hit the game winner for Nevada against Cincinnati, will head to the free throw line. We heard Coach talk about this, about his Loyola team at halftime, said, listen, I'm frustrated. My team doesn't come out and play defense the first five minutes of the game. Loyola has switched that over. But every kid knows the scouting report. And if you know that, then you know that this Nevada team has been down 14 and come back and won, and then down 22 with 11 minutes in the second half and coming back and, and won. So you cannot rest on your laurels or get excited or become complacent because Nevada's coming at you. Third year coach Eric Musselman has had to go to his bench a little bit. Let's check in with Lisa quick. Well, we're playing ISO ball. That's what Eric Musselman told his team in the last huddle. He said, you know, we do want to shoot quick in the shot clock, but make sure it's a Nevada shot. Guys, they have not hit a three-point shot, which is so important to their offense since 13-36 in the first half. They have missed the last 10 straight. Coach is right. Guys are ISO balling for themselves when usually you see the Martin brothers ISO ball to get someone else involved. And with the flurry moves, Jackson has and scores. Got himself free in traffic. He's listed at 6'5", probably more like 6'4". It's a nice pass, but unable to finish. Caleb Martin back on the floor with those three fouls. Musselman has no choice. Bullet pass by Towns. Custer steps into it, hits it. Right about the spot. He sent Loyola to the Sweet 16. Caleb Martin responds. Three-pointer coming back with the three fouls. He is an excellent score is Martin their best score at 18.8 .8 per game 40% three point shooter as well. They're going to need him. Nevada led most of the first half all but about three and a half minutes of the first half. Ingram finds Jackson. It's going to work again. A couple of pump fakes cars again. Just wiggling his way free. You know, shoulders inside his body. Nice little shake and bump to get some space. How about the start to this half, Chris? Seven for seven for Loyola Chicago. Perfect beginning. 11 point lead answer. Back to single digits as Jordan Caroline delivers. Well, you see right there, they're going to be a little disappointed with themselves. They gave up a wide open three that time to Caroline. No communication in the perimeter defense. Loyola 22 and 0 this year leading at the half. They've got a string going to 24 and 0. And Towns again with the blow by of Hall. He's getting right by him every time. The exact same play. What happened was is a pick and roll at the top. The defense anticipated he was going over. He said Sight went baseline. Hit him. Caleb Martin, no. Cody Martin the rebound. Put back. Strong. That's a point guard. Cody going into that point guard role with the injury to Lindsey Drew, their starting point guard who's been out a month. He blew his Achilles. Lindsey is finally here with the team. He was not able to attend games in Nashville coming off that surgery, but he's here. That's left Nevada with that six man rotation. That's a travel. Towns turns it over. Timeout on the floor. 44 36 Loyola Chicago and Porter Moser are they trying to punch their ticket to the Elite Eight we shall see and use the prayers of the faithful to get by in this game <laughs> sister Jean offering up the prayer before the game as she usually does 98 years of age great interview by the way before the game with Eric Musselman's daughter Mariah Musselman eight years old the 98 year old sister Jean those are the two most famous ancillary figures here in this NCAA tournament and their teams are matching up here today. Nevada with the basketball here down eight. Cody Martin running the point. This is the same starting five that was on the floor to close it out and a good answer coming out of that timeout is Josh Hall. Sophomore from Houston, Texas. Makes it a six point deficit for Nevada. Nice job by Krutwig, not fouling on that play. Doesn't need his third. Here's Ingram. He's trying to get going. He needed that. Ingram has been quiet. That's his first points of the game. His first made field goal. Long three by Stevens. He misses again. He's 0 for 7. All seven misses coming from behind the arc for Stevens. Stevens trying to wheel himself in. He's going to miss every one he doesn't take. One of the best three point shooters in the college game. He needs to keep letting it fly. Williamson on the floor for Loyola Chicago. Here's Ingram. Trying to get him cooking a little bit. Oh, going the other way. 
Mm. Offensive foul on Ingram. That's number two. Porter Moser showing his displeasure. Yeah, didn't agree with that call. The fast motion right there, though. Good call. Ingram excited that he had his last bucket. Wanted to kind of make sure he put his imprint on his game. But he's doing it on the defensive end. Ingram's been doing everything they've asked. But now coming to the side to get a little bit of breathing. Well, no matter what he does here tonight, he's going to have one of the great moments in NCAA tournament history. Certainly one of the great moments in Loyola Chicago basketball history. That game winner he hit in the round one matchup. Caroline being hounded by Williamson. Here's Hall now. Crutwick on the floor, two fouls. Cody Martin will let it go. Back iron. Custer the rebound. Custer looking for help. Custer and Richardson. They have been playing together since they were in the third grade, been playing basketball through the AAU circuit in Overland Park, Kansas. And here at Loyola, Chicago. Custer on the tape. Custer, oh, uses the rim. The reverse by Clayton. Custer. Back at him. Caleb. Yes. Oh, he's got a beautiful stroke. It's a little unusual, but it comes out of his hand pure. Mariah likes that. She's got the lucky ears on. Right now, Nevada needs to stop. They came out playing defense, communicating in the first half, switching. They have not been switching. I think that's affected their defense as of late. Guys getting the open spaces and crevices. Richardson, again, goes under the rim. The reverse is good. Every layup these guys are going, they're using the rim to protect the shot blocker, meaning they go up on the other side. Redwick pulls down the board on the miss by Caleb Martin. Skogna now, he falls down. And I think he rolled on the baseline, he did. That'll be a turnover. Skogna got a little too excited. Right here, you see he goes, Martin can't help. What do you do? If you go up on that left side, you may get blocked. Another play, go up on the other side to use the rim as a barrier in between you and the defender. Good job right now. By Loyola Chicago. Loyola Chicago is perfect this half. 10 for 10. Richardson sits six points in the second half for Richardson, the senior. Caleb Martin with Williamson on him. Gives it right back. Saved a turnover to Caroline. Shot clock at eight. Caroline gets Crutwig up in the air. Oh, almost knocked it down. Free throws coming for Jordan Caroline. Loyola Chicago, a perfect run in this second half. They lead by nine. And two foul shots coming for Jordan Caroline as Custer will sit. Caroline was a force in that early window in the first half as he knocks down the free throw. Eight point game. Caroline, a 70% free throw shooter. MVP of the Mountain West tournament last year. Went to Southern Illinois, another transfer. That's why they call it Transfer U. All five starters for Nevada transferring to play for Eric Musselman in the last couple of years. Tell you what, as a transfer, it would be a great place to land after maybe you've been sold to build a good somewhere else that you fall in a spot like this with a coach that believes in you guys. They have trailed in each of their first three NCAA tournament games. Here's Williamson for three on a beautiful setup. Still perfect, Loyola Chicago. Caleb Martin playing with the three fouls. Caroline trying to split through the double team, cannot. Great help D that time by Loyola. As soon as Caroline put the ball on the floor, two guys swarmed over there, almost got a travel call. Cameron Satterwhite on the floor with Towns. They'll handle the ball along with Ben Richardson. Custer continues to sit the point guard, getting him valuable minutes on the bench to rest. Towns has been great. Here's Williamson now, had that pass deflected. Josh Hall with a deflection. Caleb Martin. Williams right on him, step for step. And the double team comes and he still scores. Well, so impressive. Caleb Martin playing with the three fouls. Only down eight, a lot of time to go, but that's a lot of time too for Loyola. 
to execute. But right now, Nevada, with their system and their players, it's easy to get some things going fast and quick in a hurry in spurts. They'll slow down the pace, but they play it quickly on this half of the court. A lot of passes, a lot of movement inside, outside. And there it is again, another reverse layup. Andre Jackson, Andre Jackson this time. With Crudwig on the bench picking up his third foul. Remember in the first half when Crudwig left, Loyola Chicago went on a 9-0 run. Yeah, but let's remember Crudwig put him in that position. They're not better without him. He went to work in the post, opened up the paint. That's why, that's why Loyola has so many inside paint points. He started that process for them. Caleb Man forced that with one and done. Coming to the basket, Richardson, nothing there. Wisely kicks it out. Passing up the good shot for the great shot. That's the mantra for Porter Moser. Working valuable time off the clock. Clayton Custer is soon to be checking back in as well. They've covered his time on the bench. Shot clock at two, got to get one up. Long three is up and does not hit the rim. Shot clock violation. First miss of the half for Loyola Chicago. Behind the back, the spin and a little bit of contact. Caleb Martin getting inside, trying to will his team to victory. This team, though, Nevada, they have to get back to 200 passes. That's what they want, 100 each half. Doesn't matter if you do all the one-on-one -on -one stuff. If you don't get other guys involved, there's some open looks with these great three-point shooters on this Nevada team. We were keeping track of the first half. Loyola Chicago actually hit the 100 pass total in the first half. And it's Caroline all the way in, gets by Towns. Towns didn't even bother with that big body coming his way. Efficient dribble. He was trying to get the foul, draw contact, and that's what you're going to have to do if you're Nevada. Now, if you're Loyola, stick to your game plan. Cut, move, pass up the pick and roll to try to Penetrate yourself using that rim as a protector. Custer finds Richardson. Gives it right back. Takes the three. Inside out they go. And coming in and unable to get it off. Shot clock violation again. It was close to being there for him. But they'll give it away as we check in with Lisa Byington. Porter Moser was concerned about the pace here of this game and, and the way it's kind of shifting. We showed you that last Caleb Martin bucket. There were two or three guys on him. That is his mantra in the huddle. It's called build a wall. Six eyes, six arms on the ball handler. You are going to continuously see two to three guys on the ball handler here for Nevada. Felt like that was going to be a strength for Nevada, right, Lisa? With the ball handlers that Nevada has at 6-7, like Cody Martin, as he comes up empty on the layup attempt. Back comes Loyola Chicago. Do they want to run? Do they want to pull it back? They pull it back. Clock ticks. Under eight minutes to go. Trip to the Elite Eight right in front of each of these two teams. Face guarding as Custer goes to the hole with the left hand. The scoop. What a finish by Clayton Custer. Custer using the pick and roll again as a decoy. He never uses the pick and roll going away from it to get the spin. And an answer by Cody, Cody Martin. So many points in the paint. It's been a clinic in layups. Both sides, the reverses, using the body, avoiding contact. This game has flown by. Very few fouls. Beautiful execution at times. How about Loyola? Pushing the ball so fast, only to pull it out and execute. And a turnover. Three straight, or three out of four empty trips for Loyola Chicago. All those points in the paint for the Ramblers. 42 of the 57. Caroline. Running into a wall to travel. Richardson giving up four inches on Jordan Caroline, but he traveled with it. Takes us to a timeout. The under eight timeout. 6.58 in regulation. Custer with the layup line in succession. The Ramblers have the lead. How about 38 points of the 57 on the board for Loyola Chicago. 38 are off layups. Getting to the rim at will. Larry Bird player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Fifth year in the Valley for Loyola Chicago. It's been a rough and tumble conference all these years. And Loyola Chicago trying to carry that banner to the Elite Eight. A couple of threes made by Nevada in this half. 
Here's Ingram back on the floor. And Williamson, tough shot, hand at his face. Good defensive stand for Nevada. Can they turn it into points? Down eight. It's been a familiar position for the Wolfpack in this tournament as Richardson fouls Cody Martin on his way up. Check in with Lisa. Brian and Chris, as you have said, Nevada normally a team that switches on everything, but Eric Musselman deciding to go man on man in terms of the ball screens. They're getting defeated on the slip in particular. 14 of the last 17 buckets in the paint for Loyola. So look for that. They're going to avoid the switch on a pick and roll and on the slip. They're going to defend that man to man. You know, at least so she's played the game. Lisa knows this game like the back of her hand. I would stick to the switch. I think the lead came once they started playing man to man late in the first half. And now that's the only time they've gotten the layups when they switched. There was no penetration by Loyola. But trust me, I trust Coach Me I trust Coach Musselman and his staff. Well, you think about that game against Cincinnati, their their big comeback. They went on a 16-0 run in about a three and a half minute stretch with that kind of defensive maneuver. There's a block on a pass by Martin. Cody Hall puts it off the glass and in. Here come the Wolfpack of Nevada and sensing that Porter Moser calls a timeout. A little run for Nevada. 6-0 burst for the Wolfpack. It's been a wild ride for Nevada fans, but this is what this team is trying to do after trailing at half in each game. You got to go back to Al McGuire's Marquette Warriors 1977 last time 1997 teams to win their first three games and trailing at the half so far they're two for two well as mentally tough as both of these teams are I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> whatever happens at the end of this game both of these teams really won well, by the way Loyola Chicago has not lost a game as Cody Martin fouls Custer Loyola Chicago has not lost a game since trailing at the half going back to last season January 31st in a game against Missouri State 24 straight wins when they lead at the half going back into last season even so they're used to this position as well. Loyola Chicago as a matter of fact only lost once since January 7th of this year when they lost to Bradley. Custer. Shot fake, step back right on him is Cody Martin. Shot clock at two, and Williamson can't hit. It's pulled down by Jackson. That's a key offensive rebound. But Cody Martin steals it away. Caleb on the push. Caleb all the way in, scores! The run continues for Nevada. That came off a Nevada defense. Let's think about that. That's twice now that Loyola has had to shoot late off the shot clock. Both air balls just fortunate. That Loyola of Chicago got it back, but wow, the batter upping the intensity on the defensive end. Feels so similar to their comeback against Cincinnati. Does Loyola of Chicago have an answer? They do, and it's on a reverse layup. What else would it come up? How about that? Use the rim, lay it up. Another point, another couple of points in the paint. Thirty-two layups for Loyola Chicago. Oh no, offensive board, Caroline. Caroline going up strong, scores! Two point game. Towns looking for the over the back, but Towns, you have to finish that play. You have to be vertical, you have to box out and go back. You just can't stand there, put your shoulders down, then that's not over the back. This is gonna be a wild ride to the finish line. Back to the switching, I thought the would go yeah. back to the switching. Now a little bit tougher to penetrate. Good catch and a block by Caroline right on cue. In transition, Martin and Cody scores! All tied at 59. Nevada 12 2 run in the last 340. This is a game of runs, especially when you have a pro style offense with players that can get it done. Loyola Chicago desperate for an answer here. Go to their point guard, Custer. How about Caroline on Custer right now? Can't get by him. Richardson will pull a three. No. Rebound, Caleb Martin. Here he comes. Doesn't give the ball up much when he's got it in his hands. Oh, he's feeling it when he has that little <laughs> bounce and hip and he hop in his step. I think only his brother was getting that pass. Big three is up. Air ball. Boy, it's been a nightmare for Kendall Stevens. 
the Martin twins on display, Caleb, then Cody. Wow, what a run for Nevada. And the Martin twins. Loyola is 18 and 0 when they score 70 plus. Nevada 15 and 1 when they hold their opponents under 70. Three minutes. Let's see what happens. Who bids and who breaks. There have been a lot of big swings, a lot of runs in this game. Nevada came out hot to start this game. Built it to a 12 point lead. Alice Cook called for the foul. Loyola had a great finish, 20 to 4 run to end the first half. Let's get back to the focusing after the 13 for 13 start. Since then, only two for seven, four points. Can they focus, calm down, execute? Custer runs into a wall. Here's Jackson for three. And it rattles in. Andre Jackson, inside and outside game. Quickly back. Caroline. Caleb Martin. Towns on him. Hangs. Can't get the bounce. Look at Caroline fighting for the rebound. And he's fouled. Got under the basket and draws the foul. I believe Jackson got him. That's nothing but will on this play. This is one of the plays you look at your boy and you yell at him and say, we need that rebound. The beautiful three-pointer right there, Jackson. But look at this, Caroline. Going up and getting the ball. Those are the plays you say to your teammate, if we have that stop right now, this is our game. Mm -hmm. Caroline using that size and body inside to get an extra possession for his team. Two shots here for Caroline. First miss for Caroline. Well, it's a tradition unlike any other. And with all the excitement in the golf world, the stage is set. A spectacular Masters this year on CBS. Jordan Caroline. His grandfather, JC, in the College Hall of Fame just a few minutes from here, just down the road here in Atlanta. He was a star at Illinois and then the Chicago Bears. He's built like a football player. Son of Simeon Rice has got 19 points. He's only missed one time from the free throw line. Loyola Chicago with a two point lead. Again, that switch stops the penetration up top. Richardson on the take. Cook on a good pass. Oh, can't get the finish. Towns was there. Let's see what the call is. Officials coming together now. Each saw it a different way. Michael Irving, Larry Scarotto, that is going to belong to Loyola Chicago. And a big call. We're not under two minutes yet, so we cannot go to the monitor to get a replay. It also looked like someone took the ball off of the rim right there. And that's what you want to try to do. And oh, that play hits the left knee of one of the Martin twins. Under two in regulation, under two in overtime, they can go look at it. So from here on out, plays like that can be subject to review. Big swing. Custer organizing. Two man game with Jackson. Now Custer on the move. Richardson gives it back. Jackson scores! 64-60 Loyola Chicago. The extra dribble by Richardson that time. He could have bailed out and taken that shot, maybe even knocked it down. He wanted a sure layup for a teammate. Great job with the extra pass. Caleb Martin, he's taking a big shot all year. And he buries a three. Caleb Martin makes it a one-point game. Oh. That's what I've been wanting to see in person by the Martin twins. They could do so much point guard and power forward together, almost averaging a triple double, these kids. 13 in the half for Caleb Martin. Custer, another cut there by Towns. That was Caleb who disrupted it. Cody saves it right to his twin brother. Chance for Nevada to take the lead. Eric Musselman rarely calls timeout in spots like this. And it's Caleb again. He pulls short. Right back in his hands. Kicks it in the corner. No. And Custer keeps it alive for Towns. Running right the floor, Richardson. Jackson fouled. Two free throws coming. What action here. Land it all on the line. How about this Richardson with the extra dribble, making sure his teammate gets the ball. Look at this. He knew what time it was there. He knew that was a big play as he turns to come on. But how about this? Big game, big plans, big three right there. Man, 
Caleb Martin knocking down the deep. Big free throws coming. Andre Jackson, 73% free throw shooter. Calmly knocks down the first. Stream live, 24-7 highlights, scores, and news free across all your connected devices with CBS Sports HQ. Check it out now, cbssportshq.com. The senior, Andre Jackson. Transfer from MCC in Waco, Texas. He'll take a seat. Williamson is in for his defense. 41.3 left. Nevada with the ball down three. How about Jackson? He's, he took that with the cool and coolness of a senior there, knocking down those free throws. Jackson has scored the last seven for Loyola Chicago. There's a foul on Richardson. Feels like a touch foul, but that's a foul that's been called all year. Caleb Martin, what a half he's having. Foul trouble in the first half, see that. Yeah, but doing what he does all game long, and this was the play right here, the play in the post that got his team going, taking long shots, 13 points in the second half. But more importantly, the catalyst defensively as well for getting his team to play their energetic style of ball. Porter Moser makes a switch. Jackson back on the floor for Williamson. Cody Martin at the line. Just shy of 70%. Nothing but net. The seven seed, Nevada. Two huge comebacks to get here. Including a 22-point comeback against Cincinnati in the round of 32. Two big free throws. One-point game. Loyola Chicago with the lead and the ball. 36.1 seconds left. Loyola, you have to play your same place. I expect them to come down, get in the pick and roll set. The point guard may go away from the pick and roll set, but they're going to start with the high screen and roll. Nevada has fouls to give here. Two of them, as a matter of fact. Sitting on four. Going to take it down as deep as he can. It's Cody Martin guarding Clayton Custer. Two transfers from power programs. Custer, crossover, kicks it. Towns for three. Yes, sir! Marcus Towns! Timeout, Loyola Chicago as they go up four. Game after game after game for the Ramblers. Somebody is hitting a big shot late. Pick and roll at the top. Decides to go away. Custer from the pick and roll. He's been doing it all night. And he's been doing this all night. Trusting his teammates. Towns, pump fake, big bucket, fall down and let everybody know how big of a moment it was. Marcus Towns. NCAA tournament experience with Fairley Dickinson. It has shown tonight 18 points, his second made three pointer, and he makes it a two possession game with 6.3 seconds left. Eric Musselman trying to draw another one up. They're going to need it twice. By the way, Marcus Towns had hit just six of his last 26. Three-point field goal attempts. Two for two tonight. Had the confidence to take it when it counted. Well, he did, and it's easy to make shots off of penetration, especially when you have someone coming out to you. Town saw the defender coming, that dribble, kind of gave him a good rhythm, and then he just let it fly. But, but make no mistake about it. It's all about number 13, Clayton Custer. He went away again, choosing the right time to go over the pick and roll, went away from it. Sister Jean right there now, can she really be happy? She said she picked she picked Loyola to lose today. <laughs> but uh sure she made some uh, emergency calls to try to change nah, her nah, pick. Nah, that was on her public bracket, the one she had at uh, home, the private uh, bracket. Okay, that's kind of like me, public and private bracket. Here we go, gotta get one up quick and then need a foul. And here's Caleb Martin, and he hits a three! Are you kidding? Gotta get a quick foul. They do. One second remains. They could add some time here. Man. Big shot making situation here in Atlanta. Why would we be surprised? They were down 22 to Cincinnati, a better seeded team. Well, it actually hurts Nevada right here. 
that they had a foul to give because they're going to put it in again. Officials came together. They will not add time. Caleb Martin with 16 points this half. Must foul on the catch. The foul to give hurts him badly. Timeout, Richardson. They wanted to see the setup. Those fouls are valuable. You know, you go back to Nevada's game plan, try to stay out of foul trouble because of a six man rotation. But it might be what cost them right here. Man, what a ball game. These two teams are chasing those dreams, Chris. One second remaining, though. How does Nevada possibly get the ball back other than a steal? Well, they're going to have to foul directly on the catch. They don't have time to play possum with it, but you can't blame Nevada for not being in the bonus. This just happened to soak down, yeah. come down to this game. If they would have been in the bonus all game, they may not be in this situation. So 2020 hindsight, but I don't think it's needed for that situation. Tell you what, regardless, how great is it to see these kids stepping up? I mean, clutch shots throughout the entire tournament. Oh, it's great to see these kids out here, their parents behind us and across from us in the stands and also the kids out here that are absolutely losing their minds cheering for their favorite team. It was Dante Ingram in round one. It was Clayton Custer in the second round and Marcus Towns hits the one that gives them a two possession lead. They are checking the clock now by the way to see if they will add some time. The next foul for Nevada will Send Loyola Chicago to the free throw line so they can get the quick foul. Now, a steal and a quick shot. Man, only 15 guys if you have them. Only 15 guys believe on you, in you, your trainer, your manager, your coaches. What a good feeling to walk into an arena in a neutral site with the guys you've worked so hard with as they put 1.4 back wow. on the clock. That's good. Try to sneak out and win. Adding point four. Sister Jean in position. It is Nevada who needs a prayer answered right now. Long range pass, the catch, clock ticks, there's the foul. A firm one at that. Oh, and Towns is down. Caroline, they with a heavy knees. collision. Well, Caroline is on the other side, hurting as well. Hopefully, the fans get to see this play before they make any more judgments. But he turns around. Lucky it almost wasn't a travel here. That. <laughs> Lucky that Ouch. wasn't a travel. Let me say that to basketball fans that see this. Look at that. That's oh. a travel. That's 100% wow. a travel. They knock knees. Good thing both players are okay. Definitely a travel. All right, so now side out for Loyola Chicago. And now the foul. Oh, the clock ended. Did he get it off? No. That's the game. That is the ball game. Loyola Chicago moving on to the Elite Eight. What a game. What a finish. And the team that has captivated not just Chicago land, but the nation has a date in the Elite Eight with either K-State or Kentucky. Clock runs out, foul there. They won't look. It's over. Third tournament win for Loyola Chicago by a total of four points. And it's a one point win for the team from the Missouri Valley Conference. The best part, the team goes over there to celebrate in front of their parents, in front of their supporters, in front of their family. Not many people believe that they would get here. And that's right. They're on a mission from God. Somebody please go ask the sister to pray for me tonight as well. <laughs> and let's send it down to Lisa Byington. Coach, this team does not make it easy here in the NCAA tournament. You were up by 12. How were you able to close the deal here tonight? I tell you, you got to give so much credit to Nevada. They never quit. I mean, th th those guys keep coming at you, keep coming at you, and they cover so much ground. So I was blessed we made enough plays at the end. We got a couple stops at the end, but you know, Marcus hit a big shot, but we've been doing that all year, sharing and spacing it. He shot faked them, um, and we finished it. These kids are resilient. I'm so proud of these guys. They're, they're, they're so resilient and confident that uh, you just don't know what's going to happen.
points in the paint was especially important in the second half. What did you feel like you could exploit in that area? Well, we wanted, we did want to go inside. You know, they they like to spread you and, and everything, so we wanted to go inside. We had some tough matchups with our big boy, Crutwig, but Andre Jackson really came in. We went up with Dante at the five, and we tried to space them, but uh, they're an they're a unbelievably hard matchup, and I'm really blessed we got this win. Now you're off to the Elite Eight. Thank, Thank you. you. Clayton Custer. Hug from the head coach. Hi, I give you a. Give oh, a I get a hug, hug too. Hug. Thank you. Hey, there's no quit in this team, and and you had the key assist to Marcus Towns there at the end. What did you see from him? What did you see from your team, especially here in the second half? I mean, I think Marcus Towns was the best player on the court tonight. I mean, I, I don't even think it was close either. I mean, I'm so happy for him. He's such a good basketball player and such a good person. Uh, I'm just so happy that he he dominated the game tonight and he, he led us. What does it mean for this program, for this team, for you to now have a chance to play for the Final Four? I mean, I really, like, this is unbelievable. I mean, to, to be in this situation, I'm so thankful uh, to be in this, this scenario right now. Uh, it feels like a dream, and uh, I'm, I'm just trying to keep it going as long as possible. Thank you for the time. Go hug someone who means something, uh, okay? <laughs> You're good. Clayton Custer, 15 points.